Hey, Run of the Mayhem here, and today we are going to be looking at Ghost ESP Revival 1.5. So this is going to be a deep dive video into all of the different parts of the Ghost ESP 1.5 since it's been taken over as part of the Revival project since Spooky has left. So we're going to start off with Bluetooth, so let's head into that menu now. The first app we have in here is called Find Flipper. So if I select that app there, it should hopefully bring up the MAC address, the Flipper Zero that I have right here. And as you can see, if you look at the screen, it has put up the MAC address. What's also nice is the fact that it also tells you what color it is, so you know what type of version of the flipper it is. So it could be the black one, it could be the clear one as they came shipped. That's actually baked into the firmware. Next up is List Flipper. This will list all the flippers that you have found. We then have Select Flipper. This allows you to actually select the flipper from the list by picking a number. We can then start an air tag scan. This will scan for air tags in the local area. As you can see, unfortunately, I don't have any air tags to be able to show you this one. And just like with the flipper, we can list those air tags and we can select them. Going further down, we've now got the ability to start spoofing an air tag and stop spoofing an air tag. We can do a raw Bluetooth scan. We can scan for Bluetooth skimmers. And that is all of our Bluetooth settings. At the moment, there is no Bluetooth spam on this particular firmware, but to be honest, most of it's been patched out nowadays and it's pretty much just a gimmick for skids. So first off, we have scan for access point. This scans for a Wi-Fi access point. Once we've done that, we can then select access points. So this will let us select an access point from the list that we've just scanned. We can then scan for stations. Stations are the individual devices that are connected to the access points, like your laptops, your phones, and your other IoT devices. We can then list the stations, which will make a list of those stations. We can select them just like we could the Bluetooth ones. We can then scan local area network devices. This looks for any devices that are connected via Ethernet after the fact. We can select a LAN device. We can scan all APs and stations at the same time. We can start a de-authenticate attack. So that is when we send de-authentication packets through the air to hit any AP to start making it so that devices get kicked off the network. So a good example of that is if I was to go and start a de-auth attack. So to be able to test the de-authentication function, what we first do is scan for access points. Once we've scanned all our access points and got them into a list, we should then be able to actually come out of this menu, come down to start de-auth attack, and then hopefully we should be able to see on our BLE Shark Nano that a warning has come up saying that a de-auth attack is currently in place. Following that, we have got our beacon spam with random digits and numbers. We've got our beacon spam, which will rick roll. We've got our beacon spam, which will do a list that you have put onto the SD card. We have our evil portal start, evil portal stop. If you don't know what an evil portal is, please go check out my video that explains exactly what they are. This next section here is all about capturing packets and monitoring. So the first part we have is to capture probes. Probes are what are sent out by wireless devices that are looking for networks that are out there. So SSD IDs that they've previously connected to. We can capture DOR frames, so we can actually look for and capture DOR frames that have been sent out and about. We can capture beacons, which are given out by our APs. We can capture RAW. We can capture EAPOL handshakes, which are needed for WA and WAP cracking. We can capture WPS, which captures WPS handshake attempts, which we can use for brute force attacks. And we can capture PWN, which is a general capture mode, which is focused on maintaining credentials or handshakes. Following this, we have TV cast or dial connect. This tests vulnerable smart TVs that use the dial protocol. We have power printer. This sends raw data to printers over a network to test for exposure. We have TP link test, which scans for TP link specific vulnerabilities. We have Pine AP detection that looks for rogue access points that are emulating Wi-Fi pineapple attacks. We can scan all open ports on the network using TCP and UDP ports. We can reset our AP credentials for this particular device itself. We can attempt to reset AP credentials and we can check for channel congestion, so how much traffic is on each channel. DHCP starve will actually starve a network of any DHCP requests being sent and received and the stop DHCP starve will stop that attack from happening. And then connect to save Wi-Fi will allow us to connect to save Wi-Fi, quite obviously. On this particular device, the Rabbit Labs Phantom, there isn't currently a GPS unit built into it. So if you wanted to do that, you would have to use the expansion ports or put something straight into the ESP32 yourself. So I will have a quick glance in here at the settings that are in there, but there's not much we can actually test right now as the device doesn't have that capability. 
So in here we can start war driving, stop war driving, we can get our GPS info, we can do a BLE war drive as well. If you want more information on war driving, I have made a dedicated video to that which I'll stick somewhere around. Next moves on to apps. Within the apps we have got the flap game which is basically a little flappy bird game that is built with the ghost. So as you can see you just get your little ghost and you have to keep flapping. I was never any good at this game when it came out on mobile phones and I'm still just as trash at it now. But if you're sat waiting for an encounter or you're just waiting at the bus stop, this could be something to keep you entertained mildly. And die. Also within apps we have got the rave settings. Now this rave allows you to connect to other ESP32 devices to be able to have them all within this one menu and have a rave. As the rave app we've got the clock and as you can imagine that's a clock. <laughs> Not really much to it. It does make quite a nice desk ornament though, especially if you've got an ESP in such a lovely case like this. Then we've got our settings menu. Inside our settings menu, we've got our timeout for our display, we've got our RGB mode, we've got our color theme, we've got our old control style, so you can move it between the half screen, center screen, and left and right of screen to be able to move forward, backwards, left, right, and enter. We have our terminal color when we open up terminals and that's everything within the settings menu. And that is everything. So overall, it's a really, really good firmware, plenty of in there to play with, mainly focused around Wi-Fi rather than Bluetooth, which I think is quite exciting and a good approach to take for these sort of devices, and hopefully a lot more coming. So a massive thank you to Decky for taking over the project and make it into Ghost ESP Revival, so that we have a decent piece of firmware to be able to put onto these devices. Right, so that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into what this particular device can do and what's on the firmware. I'll catch you next time. Happy hacking.